Hello. Welcome to the Data Imports, Applications, and Best Practices webinar. My name is Ashley Wallace, and I am one of the Advanced Certified QuickBooks Pro Advisors on staff at Presti and Nagley. Today I would like to take some time to talk to you about importing data into QuickBooks using two different third-party import tools. So there are many companies out there that have data in one place or another that they need to get into QuickBooks. Most companies don't realize that they no longer have to do manual data entry to be able to get this information into their QuickBooks file. Using import tools such as the Transaction Pro Importer or the Data Transfer Utility, you can easily bring this data into a QuickBooks file in a matter of minutes, not hours or days. Transaction Pro Importer can help you bring data into QuickBooks from sources like Excel, CSV, or third-party applications. The data transfer utility can help you move data from one existing QuickBooks file to another. So to give you an overview of the two products, the Transaction Pro Importer, uh, there's a few different examples of why you would want to use this product. One of those examples is data file corruption. If you have a data file that's extremely corrupt, that can't be fixed by either a pro advisor, an Intuit solution provider, or Intuit themselves, you may have to start a new data file. The nice thing about Transaction Pro Importer is you can grab the transactions uh, from an Excel file and import those transactions into a new QuickBooks file. Also, oversized data files. We all know that uh, QuickBooks tends to get some very large data files depending on how long they've been used and how many transactions are happening. So you can, again, start a new data file using the Transaction Pro Importer to bring transactions into a new file so you can sort of start from scratch, yet not really be at the scratch level. Conversions from non-Intuit software. If you've been using an existing software for years and you want to switch over to QuickBooks, we don't just have to start with beginning balances. We can actually bring over OpenAR, OpenAP, Outstanding Checks, all those individual transactions using this product. And lastly, if you're using a third-party application that you can't afford a custom link to QuickBooks or one can't be built for whatever reason, if you can get that information out of the third-party app and into Excel, we can then get those transactions into QuickBooks using the Transaction Pro Importer. So the Data Transfer Utility, which is a separate product, there's a few examples of why you would want to use this software as well. You can bypass any security limitations. So if you have sales reps that you only want them to have access to certain customers, you can set them up with their own data file, have them do their transactions with their customers, and then you can use the data transfer utility to move that data from the salesman's QuickBooks file into the live QuickBooks file. It's also a nice alternative to using the accountant's copy. We all know that the accountant's copy can be a little bit cumbersome uh, and has a lot of issues. So instead of using that, you can have your accountant do their journal entries and their adjustments in their copy of the QuickBooks file, and then you can use the transfer utility to move those transactions into the live file. You can also combine multiple QuickBooks files. If somebody's working in the incorrect data file, uh, and they've done a whole bunch of transactions where it would be really painful to have to go in and manually create all those transactions into the correct company file, we can use the transfer utility to move those transactions over. And finally, um, condensing a QuickBooks data file. We all know that the QuickBooks condense feature is, is not great. It doesn't really uh, shrink the data file. Um, it tends to skip transactions, things like that. So instead of going that route, we can start a new QuickBooks file. We can transfer the data over that we need and leave everything else uh, in the old file. So with that being said, I would like to go ahead and start getting into demos of the two products. And we'll talk a little bit more about each product in depth. So for the Transaction Pro importer, what you're able to do is you can import transactions as well as lists and bank statements from any Excel or text file such as the CSV or a tab delimited. Um, you're also able to map your fields. So however your spreadsheet is set up, you can show the importer, OK, my fields in my spreadsheet equal these exact fields in QuickBooks so it knows exactly where to put the data. You can also edit your data in the import program prior to actually sending it into QuickBooks. So if you've got some incorrect information in your spreadsheet and the importer catches it, you don't have to go completely out to fix it in the spreadsheet and then start over, you can fix it right in the import software. 
You also have the ability to use custom fields. So if you have custom fields set up in your QuickBooks file, you're able to basically turn on a preference where the importer will bring those custom fields over into the mapping so you can map data into those custom fields as well. The really nice thing about the Transaction Pro importer is it's going to create a transaction lock for you so you can see what did not come in. If you've ever worked with IIF files before, which had always been uh, the preferred way to import information into QuickBooks, it doesn't give you any kind of log to tell you what did or did not come in. The Transaction Pro importer will give you that log. It will tell you exactly what came in and exactly what didn't. And if it didn't come in, it'll tell you why. So you can go ahead and fix it. So let's jump out of here for a second and let's go into a QuickBooks company file. So I'm going to op open up Premiere 2013. Once I open up the data file, then I want to go ahead and open up my Transaction Pro importer. The Transaction Pro importer can't be opened unless there's a QuickBooks company file open first. So I'm just going into a sample company file. So it's just this is just a warning saying that it's going to change the date so I recognize that it's a sample file. So I'm just going to say OK. So once this opens completely, I'll go ahead and minimize it, and then I'll start to work with the Transaction Pro importer. So I'm going to minimize QuickBooks. Now I'm going to find my Transaction Pro importer, and I'm going to open it up. So the first thing that you're going to notice is QuickBooks is going to pop up an application certificate screen. Uh, if you've ever worked with a third-party program before, you know that everything has to be basically accepted into the QuickBooks file. So we have to tell QuickBooks that it's OK that this particular software is accessing its data. So I'm going to say yes. I always want the TPI or the Transaction Pro Importer to access QuickBooks. And I'm going to say continue. It's going to say basically, are you sure? And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say done. So now, if I open up my Transaction Pro importer, here it is. So the first thing that I have to do is take a look at my spreadsheet, make sure that I have all of my data where I want it to be before I go through all my mappings and things like that. So I'm going to open up my spreadsheet. And the type of data that we're going to be bringing in today is invoices. Like I said earlier, Transaction Pro Importer will allow you to import basically any type of transaction, um, but you have to do each transaction itself. So you have to do your invoices, then you have to do your checks separately, your bills separately. Everything has to be separate. So the first thing that I want to point out in this spreadsheet are my customers. So I want to show you that in the QuickBooks company file, these customers do not yet exist. So if I go into my customer center, I'm just going to search for Ann's Bakery. OK, we're in our A's here, and we see that Ann's Bakery does not exist. And I can also tell you that, that none of these customers here exist in QuickBooks yet. We're going to have the importer create them for us. OK. So let's just open this up a little bit. So as you can see here, we have all of the information that we want to import into QuickBooks. You may notice that there are the same customer on multiple lines, as well as the same reference number, kind of with all the same information. The reason for that is the way that the importer wants this set up is if there's multiple line items per invoice, you have to have multiple lines on your spreadsheet. So this particular invoice is going to have two line items. So I have to have two lines on my spreadsheet, all with duplicated, duplicated information, such as the reference number, which will become the invoice number, the customer name, the transaction date. All of that information needs to stay the same. And then when you get to your item section, that's where it becomes different, because we have two different items. So I'm just going to slowly scroll over here to the right so you can see all the fields that are available. So it's going to give you everything right down to the billing address, the shipping address, phone numbers. Keep in mind that any information that you don't put into the spreadsheet, QuickBooks will use the information that is already set up in the record in QuickBooks. So if you leave out the bill to address or the ship to address, 
QuickBooks will, when creating the invoice, will use the information set up in the customer record. Same thing with items. So if all, all you put in is the item name into the spreadsheet, it will choose that item on the invoice and it will use the description, the price, uh, the account, everything like that that's already set up in the item list. But if I put the information into the import spreadsheet, it will use the information in the spreadsheet even if it's different than what QuickBooks has by default. So here we can see in our items that we have two items for this invoice, cabinets and hardware. They're both at a quantity of 10. And here's our description and our price. Okay. So I'm going to continue to scroll to the right again just so you can see all the fields that are available. So here's our classes. We can use classes per line or per invoice, either one. Customer account numbers, sales tax. You can mark it as to be emailed. We have some other fields, the AR account, sales tax code. So you can see that pretty much everything is available within this importer. So I'm going to scroll back here to the left. So again, these are all the invoices that we're going to import in. So now that I have my spreadsheet, I can leave it open if I wanted to, or I can close it out. It doesn't matter. You can leave it open. So I'm just going to minimize the screen. So I'm going to go back to the importer. And the first thing that I have to do is I have to browse to the file that I want to bring into QuickBooks. So I'm just going to choose my Browse button, and I'm going to browse for the file. So I'm going to go to my Importing Tools folder, Transaction Pro Importer folder, and my import sample. Once I've chosen my file, I choose open. So now I have to choose the Excel sheet that I'm going to be using. Obviously, we all know that there's multiple sheets that you can have within one Excel workbook. So I'm going to let it default to sheet number one, because that's the one that I have the data on. Then down here, I want to choose my import type. So if I click this drop down, you can see that there's all different types of imports that you can do. Every kind of list, every kind of transaction are all going to be here. So I'm going to choose invoice because those are the types of transactions that I have in my spreadsheet. So here in program options, we basically have a list of options that we can choose from. Once you choose these options, if you're doing the same type of import every time, you shouldn't have to change this. It will remember the information. Uh, but little things like do not add new customers. So if you have a spreadsheet where every customer on that spreadsheet should already be in QuickBooks, you may want to just check the box that says don't add any new customers because it's probably a mistake that it's there in the first place. I'm going to leave it unchecked because I want it to create the customers. We also have do not add new items. Um, we can validate the file before importing, which will catch the most amount of errors prior to the actual import. It's going to take some extra time, but it sort of saves time on, on the end result as well. And here's the big one down here. So to generate a transaction log. So this is what I was referring to earlier, that PPI will give you a log of what did or did not come into QuickBooks. So we always want to make sure that this is checked. And if I jump over to the Advanced tab, here's where you can say that I want to enable custom fields in Transaction Pro Importer. But I'm going to leave that blank for now. So you can see that there's a bunch of uh, options here. So if you decide to use this product, make sure that you come in here and just check it out and see what you can and can't do. So once I've set all my options, I'm going to choose Save down here at the bottom. And now I'm going to choose Next. So the next thing that it's going to bring me to is a data grid. So it's basically showing my Excel spreadsheet in the Transaction Pro Importer Wizard. So keep in mind that any of these fields can be edited right here in the screen just by double clicking, highlighting, and changing the information. I know all of my information is correct, so I'm just going to go ahead and say Next. So here is where we would do the mapping. So depending on how you name your columns in your Excel spreadsheet, you have to basically match those columns up to the fields that are in QuickBooks. So I happen to have named my columns exactly what QuickBooks names them, so it makes it very simple. But if instead of customer you had just name, you would have to choose your name column here saying, OK, equals the customer fields in QuickBooks. So once you go down the whole line and you have your mapping set, 
you can choose to save that mapping. So again, if you're using the same type of import every time, you can just reload the map and not have to go line by line to set everything up. Once you have your mapping set, we go ahead and choose next. So here's another screen of, of sort of a review that's now showing you your mapping. Uh, again, we can change any information here by a double click and just changing the information if we need to. Again, all of my information is correct, so I'm just going to go ahead and say next. And here's the last screen. So this is the QuickBooks item settings. It's going to tell you that if it had to create a QuickBooks item, what kind of item type would we want it to be, what account would we want that item posting to, and what sales tax code do we want the item to use. Now, if you have the preference set, the option set to not create new items, this screen pretty much becomes useless. You don't need to worry about where it's posting. But the general rule of thumb is that I always create a dummy account in my chart of accounts that says, you know, QuickBooks uh, items created or TPI items created or something like that. So I can always check to make sure that if something did get created, I know exactly where it went and I don't have to search for it in my QuickBooks file. So once I have all this information filled in, I'm going to go ahead and choose Finish. Are we sure we want to begin the invoice transfer to QuickBooks? And I'm going to say OK. So down here at the bottom, it's giving us a little status, and it's processing one of 11 lines in my Excel spreadsheet. So this could take a significant amount of time if you have a huge spreadsheet, or it can just take you know a minute or so if you have just a few lines. So keep in mind if you've got a very large spreadsheet that you may want to take a lunch break or something while this is, is running because it can take some time. So now it's giving me the message that the, imp the invoices have been imported into QuickBooks. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. And here's my transfer log. So what I usually do is I come down here to the bottom and I choose the box that says filter for records that did not import. I don't care about everything that did import because obviously everything would be okay with that. Just show me the ones that didn't come in. So if I check the box and nothing shows up, it means that everything came in perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and choose close. And it's saying you didn't save the log file. Are you sure you want to do that? Because once you close out the log file, if you haven't saved it, you can't get it back. So I'm going to say I know, and I'm going to say okay. So now I can close Transaction Pro Importer. And let's take a look at QuickBooks. So if I go into my customer center, here is Ann's Bakery. And if I double click here, here is the invoice that the Transaction Pro importer created for me. Let's just make this bigger. So you can see that there's two lines. There's the cabinet line as well as the hardware line, quantity of 10 each a rate of 1000 on the cabinets, a rate of $50 on the hardware, and here's my total invoice, $11,313.75. Now if I take a look at my spreadsheet, you're going to see that it's exactly the same. So let's just take a look at one more. So John's Barbershop was another customer that was in my spreadsheet, and here is the invoice that it created. This was a single line invoice for blueprints, a quantity of one, and a rate of 500. So here it is. So that was the Transaction Pro Importer. You can see how simple it is to use. Uh, it's, it's very easy, it's very quick, uh, and it's, it's a very powerful tool that you can import thousands and thousands of transactions within you know, a few hours rather than a few days worth of data entry. So at this point, I want to close out QuickBooks, and I want to jump over to the data transfer utility, which was the other software that we were talking about earlier. What the data transfer utility can do for you is it's going to be able to transfer data from one QuickBooks file to another. So a lot of people tend to come to us if they've upgraded their data file to Enterprise, but they didn't mean to. So what generally happens is they order the Enterprise trial, they're already on Premier or Pro, let me take a look at Enterprise, let me see what this can do for me, they upgrade their live data file, they take a look at Enterprise and say this is great but I don't really need it, okay let me go back to Premier, and they can't. Once you go up, you can't go down. 
So what we generally do in this situation is we'll use the data transfer utility to grab all of the transactions out of enterprise that they've done since the upgrade and move them down into the Premier file so they can continue on as they were. You can do this on non-networked or networked PCs. If you choose to do it on non-networked PCs, the importer or the data transfer utility will give you sort of an import uh, file that you can carry over to the PC that's not networked and, and do the import that way. And again, you can use this instead of the accountant's copy. So I'm going to open up Premier Account in 2012. And it's going to be a similar process that we had with the Transaction Pro importer that we have to map the utility to the QuickBooks file. Keep in mind that the data transfer utility is QuickBooks to QuickBooks, so we're going to be working with two different QuickBooks files. We're going to have our source company and we're going to have our destination company. So I want to show you the source company first. So I'm going to get, go ahead and open that up. And basically what I've done to set this up to show you how this is working is I've taken a sample company file and I duplicated it. I made a copy of it. I went into the copy and I deleted some transactions out of the copy. So I've created a report to show you exactly which transactions we're going to be working with. So I'll show you that report in both the source company as well as the destination company so you can see exactly what happened. So once I'm in my source company, I can go to my reports, and I'm going to go to my memorized reports, and it's a missing checks report. So I have this report filtered for November 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2016, and we can see that there's a listing of a whole bunch of checks here. These are all of the checks that I deleted out of the destination company. So these are the checks that I'm going to be copying over to the other company file. So I'm going to close this report, and now I'm going to jump over to my destination company. Okay, so we'll just give this a second to open, and then we're going to run the same exact report that we just ran before in the source company. So if I go to my reports, memorized reports, missing checks. Okay, so now, as we expected, here is a completely blank report. It's still the missing checks report. It's still filtered for the same date range as the report in the source company, but because I deleted all the transactions, this report is blank. So after we complete the transfer, this report should have a bunch of checks in it. So let's close this out. And I'm going to close this company file. So I'm going to minimize QuickBooks, and I'm going to open up the data transfer utility. So I'm going to go back into my importing tools folder. I'm going to go to the data transfer utility folder and open up the data transfer utility version 11. So here's the data transfer utility. So the first thing that I have to do here is I have to tell the utility which company file is my source company. So to do that, I have to open up QuickBooks and open up that source company file. So I'm going to open up the source. And once this is open, I'm going to bounce back to the utility. So now that I have the source company file open in QuickBooks, I can click this Add Change button. And it's going to say, if you have not connected the QuickBooks company file before, QuickBooks is going to pop up a screen after you click OK before. And basically, the screen that's coming up is the same one that came up for the Transaction Pro importer for the integrated application. So if I say OK, so here's that screen. QuickBooks application with no certificate, it's basically saying, are you sure that we want this program to access the QuickBooks data? And I'm going to say yes. Keep in mind that if you choose this option of yes, allow access even if QuickBooks is not running, 
you have to select a username. I'm going to select admin just because I'm in a sample file, but if you're doing this in your live company file, I always suggest that you create a user specific to that third-party application that's accessing QuickBooks. This way, you can always run an audit trail report to see what changes were made by the specific user. So if there's ever a question of who created this transaction, you can find out if it was the importer or if it was whoever's logged in as admin or, or, or so on. Okay, so I'm going to choose continue. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to say yes. And done. You have completed the connection to the source company. Okay, so now I need to close my source company and I need to open up my destination company because I also need to map the data transfer utility to the destination company just as I did with the source company. So now that I'm in my destination company, again, I can bounce back to the transfer utility. And now for the destination company line, I can choose add slash change. And it's going to give me the same exact process that it did with the source company. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to choose yes to always allow access. Again, I'm going to choose the admin, but you, on your company, you want to make sure that you create a user. Choose continue and say yes. Say done. And now we're back to the transfer utility and it says that we've successfully completed the connection. So now at this point, I want to go to line four and select the type of data that we were going to be bringing into QuickBooks or into the new QuickBooks file. So if I click on this change button, it gives me a whole listing of the types of transactions that we can bring over into the new company file. I have it already set to checks, which is the type of transaction that I want to bring in, but keep in mind that there's all these different types. One of the things that you want to remember is that if you're bringing in multiple types of transactions, make sure you do it in the proper order. As we all know, quick, uh, transactions are linked together in QuickBooks. So if you have an invoice, you have a payment for that invoice, and then you have the deposit of that payment. Same thing if you have a bill, then you have a check that's been written. So you want to make sure that you follow that same order so the linking can stay the way it needs to be. So if you're going to be doing invoices, payments, and deposits, make sure you do all of your invoices first, then all of your payments, and then all of your deposits. So once you have your transaction type checked, choose Close Form. And now I want to choose my date range of information that I'm going to be bringing over. So I want, I'm doing a custom date range. So I'm going to change this to November 1st, 2016 to 12-31-2016. There's also this button for additional criteria. I'm not going to be using any of it for my particular example, but you may just want to check it out to see what information can also be brought over. Um, you can do different reference numbers. You can do different names, so from uh, customer A through customer F, and you don't want any of the other customers being brought over. Or, you know, invoice number 100 through 200, but 300 and more, we don't want those coming over. So you have a, a bunch of different options of, of how you want the information to come over or what information you want to come over. So now that I've chosen my date range, now it's time to do the actual transfer. So the first thing that I need to do is open up the source company. And down here at the bottom, it's going to give us a status. And we want to wait until this says that it's completed. Oops, I forgot to close my company file. OK, let's close this. We always want to have the QuickBooks company files before we do the uh, close, before we do the import, because the, uh, the import tool will actually open up the company files as it needs it in the background. So let's try this again. OK, so it's opening the source company, and it's asking us to wait. So we can see that QuickBooks is going to flash in the screen. because it's, basically, it's opening up the, the company file. And now it brings forward the transfer utility again, and now it says that the connection is opened. So 
So now that the connection is opened, I can export the data. Again, please wait. Okay, so now it says that it's finished exporting the data. So now I want to choose to view the export report. So this report is just a listing of all the transactions that have been exported out. If I want to, I can come up here to choose to print this report, or, or I can just close it. I always suggest printing it so you have something to compare to, uh, but for the example today, we're just going to close the report. So now that I've done the export, now I need to come down here and open up the destination company to begin the import. So again, we always want to watch the processing status down here at the bottom. QuickBooks is going to flash on the screen, and eventually the transfer utility will come back. Here it is. Okay, so the connection is opened. So now I can choose Import Data. Okay, finish importing data, click View Import Report above. So now I can choose this button to view the import report. And it says to see page two and later for the actual details. So I'm just going to come over here and choose, oops, choose page two. And I see over here on the right, the import status all says OK. So everything should have come in properly. Again, you may want to print this just to compare it to the export report. But for now, I'm just going to choose close. So now my job in the data transfer utility is done. So now I want to jump over to QuickBooks and open up my destination company to see if the information really did come in. So once it opens up completely, we're going to go ahead and run that same report that came up blank earlier. So if I go into my reports, memorized reports, missing checks, November through December deleted, and here they are. So again, you can see that this is a relatively simple program to use, and it saves you a tremendous amount of time. So that's the end of both demos. What I want to leave you with is the websites for these two products, so you can take a look and, and find some more information on them. So for the the Transaction Pro Importer, the website that we're going to go to is baystateconsulting.com. Okay, so that's baystateconsulting.com. So here's the website for the Transaction Pro Importer 5.0, which was the software that I used. Keep in mind that there is also an import wizard for QuickBooks Online. Okay, so if you're going to be using this with the online edition, make sure that you buy the version that is specific to the online edition. You can't use the regular TPI 5.0 with online. You have to buy the online specific. There's also a Transaction Pro exporter. So this is really nice because you can actually export transactions from a QuickBooks company file into Excel. And again, there's also an exporter for QuickBooks Online. Lastly, there's also a Transaction Pro deleter. So if you have a whole bunch of transactions in QuickBooks that you don't want there for whatever reason, you can easily use this Transaction Pro deleter to delete the transaction. So let's bounce over to the website for the data transfer utility. And that website is the letter Q, the number 2, and the letter Q dot US, which stands for QuickBooks to QuickBooks. So the data transfer utility is the one that I showed you today. You can see here on this website that the, he's got multiple products of things that you can use to move over transactions to QuickBooks. You can merge customers. You can combine reports. You can remove data similar to the Transaction Pro Deleter, um, a check transfer utility to work with payroll checks. So feel free to click through here and, and check out what he has. One of the things that I really want to point out on this particular software is if you go to buy this software, make sure that you choose the right version. So if I scroll down, I'm um, sorry, if I go up to how to buy, you'll see here that there's multiple versions and 
very specific versions work with very specific versions of QuickBooks. So if you're on the latest version of QuickBooks, either Enterprise 12 or 13 or regular QuickBooks 12 or 13, make sure that you buy version 12 of the data transfer utility. If you're on Enterprise 11 or 12, regular QuickBooks 11 or 12, make sure that you choose version 11. So just be very careful that you buy the correct one. So one of the other things that I want to mention that's the most important is before you ever do any importing into QuickBooks, regardless of what software you're using, always make a backup first. Once you do these imports, you can't undo them. So make sure you make a backup, make sure you know where that backup is, so that way if it makes a mess, you can easily just restore your backup and start over. So that's all the information that I have for you today. I want to make sure that you have our contact information in case you have any questions uh, or issues or, or what have you that we'd be happy to help. So on the screen is my information if you ever need to reach out to me. And please make sure that you check back often for additional videos. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. Take care.